The indicted Ukrainian associate of Rudy Giuliani says he has, quote, hard evidence of Donald Trump's misconduct in the plot to bribe Ukraine. Joseph Bondi is a lawyer for Lev Parnas. He tweeted, quote, he has material first-hand evidence that is in our national interest to hear. Part of that evidence we're learning also pertains to the top Republican on the House Intelligence Committee, this man, Devin Nunes. Another of Parnas's lawyers, Ed McMahon, told the Daily Beast earlier this week that Parnas, quote, helped arrange meetings and calls in Europe for Representative Devin Nunes in 2018. Nunes' aide, Derek Harvey, participated in the meetings, the lawyer said, which were arranged to help Nunes' investigative work. McMahon didn't specify what those investigations entailed, end quote. Betsy Woodruff Swan's reporting was entered into the congressional record during the public impeachment hearing on Thursday. Betsy Woodruff Swan is still working on the story. She joins us now. She's a politics reporter for The Daily Beast and an MSNBC contributor. Also with us, as I always love to have when we've got complicated legal messes, is Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney from the Eastern District of Michigan and an MSNBC legal contributor. Thank you to both of you for being with us. Betsy, let's start with you. Uh, what is this new information about Lev Parnas? I can tell you that I spoke with Bondi, the lawyer you referred to earlier this evening. He told me two things that are new, uh, new for me to have confirmed. The first thing he said is that, is that an aide to Congressman Nunes told Lev Parnas that Nunes and his team were investigating the Biden family and a Ukrainian energy company called Burisma, where Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was a board member. Those topics were of paramount importance to President Trump and Rudy Giuliani. Trump and Giuliani pressured the Ukrainian government to investigate those specific topics, apparently in hopes that such an investigation or the announcement of such an investigation would benefit Trump. And the second thing that Bondi told me is that a former Ukrainian prosecutor named Viktor Shokin, an important character, told Lev Parnas that he had a meeting with Congressman Nunes in Vienna. Viktor Shokin is a vital character in this story. He was the prosecutor in Ukraine, widely accused of corruption, who Biden and other Western leaders basically uh, pushed out. Biden and other European leaders told the Ukrainian government that they wouldn't get a, a financial aid package unless Shokin was ousted. Shokin now has claimed that the reason he was ousted was because he was scrutinizing Burisma and that Biden forced him out as part of a quid pro quo. The evidence belies those allegations, mm -hmm. but that allegation is something that President Trump appears to have bought hook, line, and sinker, and it's part of what he was pressuring the Zelensky administration to announce that they were scrutinizing uh, back on that July 25th phone call. Now, Barbara, as you know, we study these things as journalists and people like Betsy report on them, but the little we know about the law leads one to think that Devin Nunes was front and center in these hearings. He was in all of the so-called secret hearings, the, the behind closed door uh, hearings that Republicans accused uh, Democrats of not letting Republicans into, even though Devin Nunes was in all of them. He used to be the chair of the Intel Committee. He's the ranking member, and he has been there all week. Americans have watched this man all week. Uh, Eric Swalwell, uh, who is on the Intelligence Committee, entered Betsy's reporting about Devin Nunes into the record and said this. Mr. Chairman, you have been falsely accused throughout these proceedings by the ranking member as being a quote-unquote fact witness. Now, if this story is correct, the ranking member may have actually been projecting. And in fact, he, have may, he may be the fact witness if he is working with indicted individuals around our investigation. Now, now, Barbara, we've had this conversation about a few people over the last several months, including the Attorney General uh, Bill Barr. If Devin Nunes went to Ukraine and is mixed up in this conversation one way or the other, even if he was simply investigating by holding meetings with people who are sort of principals in this discussion, how does that play into the fact that he is the ranking member, the lead Republican uh, involved in these impeachment hearings? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of layers to unpack here. I mean, uh, uh, at one level is just as a, a fact finder who is so, supposed to be in kind of a position of serving as a check and balance on the executive branch, if he himself is involved in uh, investigating this on his own, freelancing, it seems like he's got 
a recusal situation or a conflict of interest. I don't know how the rules work there with regard to members of Congress, but it seems like he's intertwining a bit of his own involvement uh, with, along with his role in oversight. So that seems a little strange. It also could be the case, and it depends on the facts, if he is involved directly in obtaining a thing of value in connection with an election, he himself could be committing crimes, campaign finance violations, if he's assisting President Trump in getting dirt on Joe Biden, knowing that there's no merit to the information in these investigations. So problematic um, in a couple of levels there. Hey, uh, Betsy, from your reporting, uh, you say congressional records show Nunes traveled to Europe from November 30th to December 3rd, 2018. Three of his aides, uh, Harvey, Scott Glabe, and George Pappas traveled with him per the records. U.S. government funds paid for the group's four-day trip, which cost over $63,000. You got this from public records. Um, I, I don't know that I've heard Devin Nunes speak about this or speak openly. It feels like it would have been relevant, uh, relevant to bring up in the, uh, in the proceedings. That said, you're getting information from the lawyer of Lev Parnas, a guy who has been charged uh, with election offenses. Uh, how do we feel about the information that you're getting from the lawyer of Lev Parnas or information that originates with Lev Parnas? Look, people are at their most credible when they are speaking under oath. I have no reason to believe that the information that Bondi has told me on the record is incorrect. But it goes without saying, without question, that the statements that Bonnie has made would carry significantly more weight were Parnas to say them on the record and under oath to Congress. So a big question that's open right now is whether Parnas will end up going before Congress, taking an oath, and sharing what Parnas's lawyer has shared with me. Now, for Parnas to do something like that, it would be incredibly risky, in part, of course, because he's been indicted in the mm -hmm. Southern District of New York. So one possible avenue that his lawyers could potentially pursue, and which lawyers sometimes pursue when they have a client who both faces criminal exposure before the Justice Department, but also has information that's interesting to Congress, one avenue they could look at is trying to get a specific type of immunity from Congress where Parnas would make a deal with Capitol Hill that he wouldn't face criminal liability for the particular matters that he discussed before the House Intelligence Committee. Now, it's unclear to me whether such a deal will be cut, whether the House Intelligence Committee would think it was important enough to them to bring in Parnas mm -hmm. to make that kind of agreement. But those agreements have been made in the past, and it's clear that Parnas at the very least, had significant visibility into many of the topics that are at the heart of the impeachment inquiry. So, Barbara, put your prosecutor hat on now. Uh, if a deal, if such a deal needed to be made, I'm sure Congress could make it if they thought that it was, as Betsy says, important to have Lev Parnas there. Is there some danger, given what you've heard in the last week, given the testimony from remarkably credible people, Fiona Hill and the like, that America heard all week, and we know that millions and millions of Americans were glued to that testimony this week, is there some risk in getting Parnas involved in this? There is at a couple of levels. Um, it, it may very well be that what he has to say is true and what the reporting is is true, but a couple of problems with it. Um, one is, um, if, if Congress or uh, the Southern District of New York, which is handling the criminal prosecution, were interested in this information, his lawyer wouldn't need to be tweeting about it and having um, public discussions about this. So it seems that they are trying to create some public pressure uh, to, to get them to bite on this information. And it seems that they're reluctant to bite, either because they believe it not to be credible, or it may be that they just don't want to go down this road, at least not at this moment. Um, it may be that Focusing on Devin Nunes at this moment is a distraction. Uh, the, the testimony has been very focused. We've heard two weeks of very uh, compelling witness testimony. And to now go down another uh, you know, rabbit hole talking about Devin Nunes is maybe just too far afield from the relevant impeachment inquiry focusing on the conduct of President Trump. So it, it may just be they don't want to go down that, that road. The other thing is it gets complicated when you offer immunity to a witness to testify before Congress because it could preclude charges against him later by uh, the Southern District of New York, and they may want to continue to keep the heat on him to use that as leverage 
to get information about Rudy Giuliani, right. President Trump, or others. And so um, it, there may be some, some very good reasons that they're reluctant to deal with him. It's a complicated issue. It did need a little unpacking, and we appreciate the help that you've both given, both in your reporting and your analysis. Uh, Betsy Swan and uh, Barbara McQuaid, thanks to both of you. Coming up, John Bolton is back on Twitter teasing a backstory, but Democrats say he needs to tell in the deposition room. That's next.